All right, so we have a few new polls that came out. Unfortunately, these polls don't have a lot of information in them, unlike the YouGov poll we looked at yesterday. But they are interesting polls. We have an ABC Ipsos poll that we're going to look at, and they're like just a few crosstabs we'll look at in that one. We have a poll from Alaska and a poll from Iowa. Let's go ahead, dive into the polls, and see what the numbers say. Now, before we start, a few things. One, they're doing some drilling upstairs, so you might hear that. I'm going to just try to power through that, and hopefully you won't hear it over the audio I have. The second thing is, a lot of people below have been talking about, you know, these polls mean nothing. Make sure you register. Make sure you vote. Yes, yes. Keep saying that. Comment down below. People, register. Vote. If you want to see Kamala Harris win, make sure you're able to be part of making her win. So keep on talking about that. Keep on putting those messages down because it's important that we get as many people out to vote as possible. And if you aren't registered to vote, you can look online and find the resources. I recommend that you go to your county or the local office, sometimes they're in the city, where they actually administer the elections where you live. Go in there, register to vote. If you can't go there, see if you can get somebody that can bring you a form to your place and then you can fill it out and they can turn it back in. But going there is the best option. Ask them if you're there before the deadline for the presidential election. Even if you aren't, even if you missed the deadline, still register to vote. And if you are registered to vote, make sure you check your registration and see if you still are. Because there are situations like in Florida where people who are active Democratic voters have been purged from the voter roll. So you want to make sure that you have that. And if you are in a state that has uh, ID laws, you want to make sure that where you're registered and your ID are the same because that's another way they can deny you the right to vote. So make sure everything is set so that you can go, you can vote, and it can be very seamless. If you vote by mail as well, I highly recommend bringing it to a drop box because you never know what can happen in the mail. Bringing it to a drop box, you know that it's going to be counted. So that's just my little public service announcement for uh, registering to vote. Another thing I want to mention is that polls are not a predictive tool for the future, okay? Uh, the only polls that can be a predictive tool for the future are like literally those polls right before election days. Ones that are a month and a half out like we have now, they have no bearing on what will happen. That's like trying to determine what the weather is going to be two weeks from now, right? We can't even forecast it three, four days from now accurately. There's no way we can do it two weeks from now. So what you see in these polls today, that's just what the electorate is like. Now it's not what it's going to be like in the future. All right, so let's go ahead and look at the most recent ABC Ipsos poll. Now, the interesting thing about this one is it's actually not administered by Ipsos, even though they are a polling firm. So I don't, I don't know why that's the case. But anyways, in this one, there are very few crosstabs, hardly any, but there are a few that I do want to talk about. And the first one is just the overall horse race. So the overall horse race number shows that Kamala Harris, amongst the likely voters, is winning 52 to 46. Now, this poll has a 2% margin of error. So that means even within the margin of error, she has a majority. And if somebody has a majority of the popular vote, that's a pretty good indication that they're going to win the Electoral College. Now, that doesn't always happen. You have to like go back to 1876 with Samuel Tilden getting the popular vote, but Rutherford B. Hayes actually winning the election. So it has happened, but still it's a pretty good sign. That 52% number, especially in state polls, especially if that's the margin of error or 53 or 54, those are good signs because it means a majority, a majority wins it. That's it. So that was the first top line number that I found interesting. Now, the second number that we only have a little bit of data on it, but the trend is good, is that of those who have now recently switched Kamala Harris, a lot of that percentage, 16% of those people are former Donald Trump voters. And I think like 12% or something are former RFK Jr. voters, interestingly enough. So you are seeing these votes peel away a little bit from Donald Trump and others. So these are good numbers and these are good signs, but we don't have much as far as the number in the cross tabs. So we don't know if this is if this is going to be sustainable. It is the start of a trend in other polls that we've seen where Donald Trump is bleeding off voters and Kamala Harris is getting them. The data is the data. That's what the data says. Listen to the data. 
Now, the main polls I want to talk about are the two that came out of Iowa and Alaska. Now, the Des Moines Register Seltzer poll came out. It's considered the gold standard of Iowa. Some people debate whether it's the gold standard or not. I think that it is still pretty good, and I think like 538 has it ranked number 12 in their overall ranking of polling firms. So I do believe it's good. They've gotten a few kind of wrong, especially with Jody Ernst, but Overall, in the last presidential election, they were spot on with their last poll. They basically said it was going to be like a 7 or 8% gap, and that's basically what it was. So they are a good polling firm. Now, in the poll that they had that just came out, it shows that it is a four-point race, 43 to 47 in this election. So this is a poll of 656 voters, likely voters as well, and the margin of error is 3.8%. So we can see that Donald Trump is very, very slightly outside the margin of error. This is a really good poll for Kamala Harris. But even though the poll is good, the real question comes, can the Democrats win? Unfortunately, with this poll, we don't have any breakdowns of anything as far as the crosstabs. Maybe there'll be some crosstabs later. But the most important crosstab I wanted to look at was the geographical crosstab. Because what I want to know from this number is how much of that vote that's becoming more Democratic is coming out of the East. Because that's where we have one of the competitive congressional districts in Southeast Iowa. And it really was the building blocks of what the Democrats had as far as their success from Michael Dukakis back in 1988. Remember, Michael Dukakis won the state all the way to Barack Obama in 2012. So let me go ahead and show you a map of what Iowa used to look like and what it looks like now. So you can see in 2012, you have a lot of blue in that northeast section. Now, this is now a Republican congressional district. I truly believe that it could be one that the Democrats could flip if they're able to get back to this map again. But as you can see, it is very blue. But now we look at the 2020 election. Not only has the rest of the state become much, much deeper of a red, but all of those eastern and northeastern counties that we see that were once Democratic have now just collapsed. And we've seen some pretty strong Democratic counties as well and some other places that have just absolutely collapsed. And now we just basically see some of the urban cores that there are in Iowa that have remained. Now, I truly believe that the state can be competitive because of Tim Walls being a neighboring former member of Congress that probably was in some of the media market that the northern part of Iowa had seen. But even with that being the case, there needs to be this huge fundamental shift because a lot of times if we see the Democrats really lose a lot, it could be because the turnout in places where Democrats are mostly concentrated, the turnout rates are low. But this isn't the case in Iowa. In Polk County and Johnson County, these counties have high turnout rates, pretty much the same as the rest of the states. So it isn't a turnout problem in Iowa as to the reason why the Democrats are losing. There is a fundamental change in the way that people think and the way that people vote in the state. And this is really where it becomes a lot harder for Democrats. Also, Democrats have seen a huge huge number of voter registration losses. And, and we've seen this in other states, but in other states, we can really correlate this with increasing Democratic votes, like in Nevada, for example, or definitely in Arizona. But in Iowa, it's different. When we look at these Democratic numbers going down and independents becoming a higher composition, those counties are becoming more Republican. So as much as I really like this poll, I need it broken down into regions at the minimum so I can see where these votes are coming from because I just think right now, looking at the turnout rates and the distribution and the lowering of the numbers for the Democrats, the registered Democrats and the Republicans are staying the same, it, it's not a winnable area. It seems very similar to Florida for me. So the second poll that we're gonna be looking at is one out of Alaska from Alaska Survey Research and we have it right here. It is Donald Trump amongst likely voters ahead 47 to 42. Once you change that to super voters, and super voters can mean anything, can mean two out of the last three elections, three out of the last four elections, um, at least one midterm. It's, it's really subjective as to what super voters means. 
all of a sudden Kamala Harris has a four point gap to Donald Trump, making this state much, much more competitive. Now, this is a state that many of us in politics have been watching for a while, feeling that it could change blue. We're seeing the changes in blue happening at the congressional level. Uh, Mark Bigich was the senator not that long ago. We're seeing the legislature really becoming a much more democratic institution as well. So there are changes happening there. Now, if we look at Alaska, it's very much where I would say Vermont was 40 years ago. Now, Vermont was a state that always voted Republican until 1964. Yes, Vermont didn't even vote for FDR, didn't even vote for Woodrow Wilson, never voted for him, always voted Republican. But in 1964, it became Democratic under that wave. And then it went back to being Republican and in 1992 forever changed to the Democratic side. Now, you think of Bernie Sanders, Patrick Leahy, Peter Welsh, and all these people, you think of this liberal bastion. But the people in Vermont are very, very independent and very, very libertarian. This is also a characteristic we see in Alaska. In fact, many people thought that Alaska might have been one of the states that Ross Perot could win in 1992, along with Vermont as well. So it's taken a while to get to the point where Vermont is right now, but it looks like we're finally there. And back in 1960, people thought that Alaska was going to be a Democratic stronghold, and it ended up not being. Now, here's a big surprise coming up in Alaska. Notice the count there. They are separated by only 500 votes with half the, half the precincts reporting. This was supposed to have been a Kennedy stronghold, but it looks like Mr. Nixon's visit to Alaska just before the end of the campaign really paid off there. He's pretty close to overtaking Kennedy in a strong point. So we are maybe now seeing the shift, this shift to the Democratic side. Now you might say libertarian, yes, that's true, but they're more civil libertarians, you know, stay out of, you know, stay out of our personal stuff, but they could be a little bit more liberal when it comes to economic issues. As a matter of fact, the state that has the highest percentage of people who are pro-choice that voted for Donald Trump is Alaska. So that's how, you know, libertarian and pretty left-leaning it is for a Republican state. So the question that we got to ask ourselves is when it comes to Alaska, where do Democrats need to go? Where do Democrats need to concentrate? And there are really three main areas. So the first one, and we're going to look at the map in a second, Fairbanks. The second one is the southern part of Anchorage. And the third one is Wasilla, home of Sarah Palin. So let's go ahead and delve into our maps. All right. So what we're going to do is we are going to look at a map that is provided on the electionsalaska.gov website. And we're first going to look at Anchorage. So you can see a lot of downtown and the northern and eastern part of Anchorage are usually very, very democratic. So we have 64%, 59, uh, 56, 57, 58%, right? So we see these areas as being very democratic. But as you get further south, it becomes much more Republican. Biden only winning by two there only winning by uh, two here. And then you see these areas becoming more democratic. Now, if we want to look at the most recent Democrat, the most recent primary for the House of Representatives, uh, we see the Democrat doing quite well in these Southern parts of Anchorage, getting a majority of the vote. So the Democrats really, and, and we're talking about some areas even quite large. So if we look, um, uh, let's see here, for example, and these are all house districts, house district 22. Uh, we see Biden got 47%. Then here we see 53%. These are the margins that the Democrats need in order to win. So South Anchorage is kind of the first area of concentration that the Democrats need. Now, as far as the Northern part, yes, you see these high seventies and sixties, whereas Biden is a little bit more in the sixties and the fifties. So running up the margins in Northern Anchorage by about 10%, if that can be done, that is going to be a massive help to the Democrats. Now let's go in and around Wasilla, home of Sarah Palin. And as you can see, it is a Republican area, but again, it comes to reducing the margins. Now, if we look at um, these areas, you can see the Democrat has 27%, 28%. Uh, 24%. But then if you look at what Biden has, talking about 22%, 
19%. Now that 29%, 26%. So this area, if you can just get a little bit, squeeze a little bit out of there, it's very much a secondary concentration area for the Democrats, but it can be an area that if they want to really make the Republicans sweat, they can. Now, of course, you might be sitting there going 72%. Democrats not going to win there. doesn't matter if you get, you know, it's not to try to win these areas. It's trying to make the margin from 70-30 to, let's say, 65-35. Those are the margins you need to win a state like Alaska. All right, so if we look at Fairbanks, we can see there are some Democratic areas in 2020 and Republican areas. And Fairbanks itself, right here in smack dab in the middle of Fairbanks, we have it that Donald Trump won by 0.4%. But if we look at the recent congressional elections, we see 52% of the vote, 60.7% of the vote. We see these margins coming down. And remember, this is a more competitive primary, right? A blanket primary. So you do see the Democrats doing significantly better here in Fairbanks. This is going to be a key if the Democrats want to win. The first main key that Democrats need to focus on is Anchorage, southern part of Anchorage. Second is in and around Fairbanks. And third, try to bring down some margins in Wasilla. All right, so that's all for today's video. I wanted to maybe go over these polls and talk about how maybe they are good, maybe they aren't but that drilling above has made it really, that has made it hard to do a video today, but thank you all very much. Uh, hopefully we get some more polls tomorrow. The polls that we just have out right now, this Alaska one, the Iowa one, and the ABC one just doesn't have really any cross tabs that we can delve into. So we, we really can't tell much from them. But we'll see, we'll see if something comes out in the next few days. So thank you all very much. Uh, have a wonderful day wherever it is you are, and we'll see you later. Bye-bye.